My husband is pushing for a divorce because I spent the night with my boss. What can I do? Hey, everyone, I never thought I'd end up in this mess, but here I am, dealing with the fallout of a huge mistake. I'm Aaliyah, 32 years old, married to my high school sweetheart, Mark, who is also a 32-year-old man. We've been married for six years and we've got twin boys, Jamie and Vince, who are seven. Mark and I met in high school. Mark was like the golden boy. He aced his classes, rocked it on the football field as the star quarterback, and even snagged the valedictorian spot. Everyone loved him. He was that guy who just seemed to have it all. Then there was me. I was just your average Joe, not as flashy or popular as Mark. While he effortlessly stole the spotlight, I sort of blended into the background, doing my own thing without much fuss. So when Mark approached me in the school hallways, I was skeptical. I mean, this guy had it all, right? Why would he be interested in someone like me? I half expected it to be some mean joke, a prank pulled by him and his buddies to make fun of the quiet kid. But as time went on, I realized Mark was for real. He kept being nice to me, showing genuine interest, and it slowly dawned on me that maybe, just maybe, he saw something in me worth getting to know. After taking the leap and letting Mark get to know me in high school, things couldn't have turned out better. We've been together ever since, from those awkward teenage years to now, navigating adulthood in our 30s. While we've only been officially married for six years, our bond goes way back to those high school days. Uh, Mark's career in real estate has been nothing short of spectacular. His natural charisma and charm have always set him apart, making it easy for him to excel in any endeavor he pursued. It's no surprise that he's become one of the biggest names in the industry, commanding respect and admiration wherever he goes. His success has translated into financial prosperity for us, providing a very comfortable life for our family. But beyond his professional achievements, it's Mark's role as a father that truly shines. Our boys, Jamie and Vince, absolutely adore him. He's their biggest hero, their source of inspiration, and the center of their world. Watching them interact with him fills my heart with joy, knowing that they have such an incredible role model to look up to. Looking back, seeing how much Jamie and Vince idolized their dad was heartwarming, but it was also tough knowing they'd always pick him over me. It was just natural, I guess, for kids to see their dad as the superhero of the family. As for my job, it wasn't anything fancy. I clocked in at an office every day, doing the usual nine to five grind, it wasn't glamorous, but it was a job, so I couldn't complain too much. And these things weren't the only things getting me down. Despite putting in the effort, I kept getting passed over for promotions. It was frustrating as heck, and it felt like no matter what I did, I was stuck in this rut. It was like I was running on a treadmill, putting in all this effort, but never getting anywhere. And let me tell you, it was really starting to get to me. When it came to paying the bills, Mark handled about 80% of the load since he made way more money than I did. I chipped in with around 20%, which seemed fair given our income gap. Because Mark was often out for work, he only tackled about 30% of the chores at home. That left me with the lion's share, doing about 70% of the household tasks to keep things running smoothly. I was beyond frustrated at work because no matter what I did, I kept getting passed over for promotions. It felt like a slap in the face to see colleagues, some of whom I had more experience than move up the ladder while I remained stuck in the same position. And what made it even more infuriating was that I knew exactly why I was being overlooked. It all boiled down to a clash I had with my old boss ages ago, long before they became my superior. It was a simple altercation, but it seemed to have left a lasting mark on them. From that moment on, it felt like they had it out for me refusing to acknowledge my hard work and dedication. So you can imagine my excitement when I heard the news that our boss was on their way out and a new one was stepping in. It felt like a glimmer of hope, a chance for a fresh start where my efforts might finally be recognized and rewarded. I had reached a breaking point at work and seriously contemplated quitting altogether. With Mark's substantial earnings, the idea of becoming a full-time stay-at-home mom seemed increasingly appealing. But just as I was on the brink of making a major life decision, everything changed with the arrival of our new boss. Hope flickered back to life within me as I dared to believe that this fresh leadership might finally recognize and reward my hard work. So I decided to stay put, holding on to the possibility of a brighter future within the company. However, 
My optimism quickly turned to dismay when I realized that our new boss was far from the savior I had hoped for. Instead of a fair and respectful leader, he revealed himself to be a pervert with a penchant for inappropriate behavior. His constant catcalling and overly friendly demeanor towards me left me feeling uncomfortable and downright disgusted, to be honest. The most frustrating part of it all was feeling powerless to speak out against his inappropriate behavior. As the head of the branch and my direct supervisor, reporting him to HR seemed futile, as though I was shouting into the void with no hope of being heard or taken seriously. The idea of getting that promotion consumed me. It felt like my ticket to prove myself, to show that I was worth something. I felt like I was always playing catch up to Mark, like he was way out of my league. Getting that promotion would have leveled the playing field a bit, you know? But at the same time, it made me feel pretty crappy about myself. Like, why did I have to feel so inferior all the time? I never talked to Mark about it because he was always busy, and I didn't want to bother him with my problems. So I went all in on trying to suck up to my boss. It wasn't exactly my proudest moment, but I figured it was worth it if it meant getting that promotion. I wanted it so bad, it even invaded my dreams at night. Yeah, I know, kind of sad, right? But that's how desperate I was. There was buzz around the office about my boss's upcoming birthday party. He'd invited everyone, including me, emphasizing that attendance wasn't mandatory but would be appreciated. It struck me that he must have been feeling pretty lonely, being unmarried and all. Anyway, I wasn't sure about going at first, but when I got home and mentioned it to Mark, he surprised me by encouraging me to go. Mark, bless his heart, could see that I needed a break from the usual routine. Since I was always knee-deep in household chores, he offered to take over the duties for the next day so I could attend the party stress-free. It was a sweet gesture and it meant a lot to me, but I couldn't help feeling a bit flustered by the short notice. I mean, my boss only gave us a day or two heads up, which felt kinda rushed if you ask me. Still, with Mark's support and a break from chores in sight, I decided to seize the opportunity and RSVP'd for the party. I RSVP'd for the party and prepared for an evening of celebration. The morning at work passed like any other day, but I couldn't shake off the anticipation of the upcoming event. I even took the time to pick out a small gift for my boss, hoping it might earn me some brownie points in my quest for that elusive promotion. When I presented it to him, he seemed pleased, though his usual unsettling demeanor lingered. Work continued without incident, with my boss even going out of his way to bring me lunch and coffee, a gesture that left me feeling a bit uncomfortable, given his position of authority. Nevertheless, I soldiered on, determined not to let his behavior dampen my spirits. As the day wore on and evening approached, it was time to wrap up work and prepare for the party. I headed home, eager to change into something more festive before heading to my boss's house for the festivities. To my surprise and delight, Mark had taken care of everything at home, leaving me free to focus on getting ready for the evening ahead. His thoughtfulness touched my heart and I couldn't help but feel grateful for such a supportive partner. With a renewed sense of confidence, I put in a little extra effort into my appearance, wanting to look my best for the occasion. Then, with a quick goodbye to Mark and the kids, I headed off to the party, ready to mingle and enjoy the evening. Of course, I didn't enjoy it. If only I had known earlier, I would have never gone to the party. The party was a blast. We had cake, drinks, and a whole lot of fun. It was one of those gatherings where everyone was having a great time, enjoying each other's company and celebrating together. Our boss might have been a creep, but he was also a really good boss and everyone liked him a bit for that. And also a party just has a way of uplifting you. As the party wound down, my boss asked if I could stick around and help him clean up. Looking back, it should have set off alarm bells, but I was too focused on scoring that promotion to see the red flags. So I agreed thinking it'd show him how dedicated I was. Uh, while everyone else headed home, I stayed behind to lend a hand. We tidied up the place, putting things back in order after the festivities. It seemed harmless enough at the time, but little did I know it was the start of something much more unsettling. Suddenly, as I bent down to pick something up, my boss's hands grabbed me from behind. My immediate reaction was to assert myself and firmly tell him to keep his hands to himself. I made it clear that if he couldn't respect my boundaries, I would leave. In response, he offered a half-hearted apology before launching into a ludicrous monologue about how he had always harbored feelings for me. 
He professed his supposed love and expressed his regret that I was already married. It was both flattering and infuriating at the same time. But I quickly shut down his advances, reminding him firmly of my marital status and firmly rejecting his advances. However, my boss then played his trump card, revealing that he knew how much I desired that promotion. He shamelessly propositioned me, suggesting that if I were to spend just one night with him, he would not only grant me the promotion I longed for, but also promise further advancements in my career, including the possibility of managing another branch in the city. My boss's behavior left me furious and filled with regret. I loathed him more than ever in that moment. If I could turn back time, I'd steer clear of that mess. But hey, no time machines, right? Despite my anger, I couldn't deny feeling tempted by his offer. The thought of finally getting the promotion I'd been busting my butt for was hard to resist. But deep down, I knew giving in would mean selling out my values and everything I stand for. Despite considering my husband and kids, I still caved to the temptation. Sure, my boss was a creep, but he was also good looking, which didn't make things any easier. Plus, I wanted that promotion so badly. In that moment, all I could think about was the idea that what my husband didn't know wouldn't hurt him. He'd never find out about this one night with my boss, and then I could just go back to my normal life. I'd finally get that promotion I'd been dreaming of, and I'd be able to stand tall beside my husband at events without feeling inferior. That thought was the only thing on my mind, so I agreed. My boss practically jumped for joy when I agreed. The guy was delusional. So yeah, I guess I was a bit tipsy because next thing I knew, he whisked me off to his room without even bothering to lock the door. Talk about a rookie mistake. But little did I know that oversight would come back to bite us in the end. Or should I say it would become my downfall since I ended up being the scapegoat in the situation. Anyway, things escalated pretty quickly once we were in his room. Clothes flew off, lips locked, and before I knew it, we were going at it like a couple of sex-crazed maniacs. It was exhilarating in the moment, I won't lie. But deep down, I couldn't shake the feeling of regret gnawing at me. I loved my husband to bits, and the thought of him catching us in the act haunted me. But I pushed those thoughts aside, telling myself there was no way he'd ever find out. So I let myself get lost in the moment, reasoning that it was just a one-time thing and that I needed that promotion more than anything. I should have seen it coming, really. My boss was a total idiot, and I can't even begin to express how much I despised him in that moment. He had the nerve to suddenly change his tune and demand that I spend the night with him. I mean, who did he think he was? Infuriated, I confronted him, demanding to know why he would even suggest such a thing. But instead of backing down, he resorted to threats, insisting that if I wanted that promotion, I had no choice but to comply. I wanted nothing more than to storm out of there with my dignity intact. But then I remembered that I had already slept with him, and walking away now would mean all my efforts would have been for nothing. So reluctantly, I resigned myself to the situation and agreed to spend the night. To cover my tracks, I quickly fired off a text to my husband, claiming I was too drunk to drive and would be crashing at my best friend's place. Thankfully, she worked with me so she could back up my story and the fact that she couldn't drive herself made it all the more believable. It was a nightmarish experience that left me feeling utterly disgusted with myself and seething with anger. My stupid as hell treated me like some sort of housemaid, making me clean alongside him, cook his dinner, and fulfill his desires repeatedly. Every moment was a painful reminder of how low I had sunk in my desperation for that promotion. As I went through the motions, I couldn't shake the overwhelming sense of sorrow and guilt that gnawed at me especially when I thought about my husband. He hadn't even responded to my text, and I couldn't bring myself to check if he had even seen it. The thought of him, oblivious to what was happening, broke my heart. Finally, morning came and my boss mercifully granted me the day off. I practically sprinted out of there, desperate to rid myself of his presence and the lingering stench of shame. All I wanted was to go home, take a long, hot bath, and scrub away every trace of him from my skin. As I made my way back, I couldn't help but wonder if my husband would be home. I wondered if he would be able to tell from my face or body language that I had cheated on him. I knew the kids would be in school by now and I was thankful for that. I just wanted to go home then bath and then nap for some time. I, said that. I felt like the weight of the world was crushing me with shame. I wanted to tell my husband everything, but I knew it would be game over for our marriage in a heartbeat. He had zero tolerance for cheating. 
plain and simple. Plus, when I really thought about it, the reason I cheated seemed pretty dumb. Imagine trying to explain to your husband that you messed up because you wanted a stupid promotion. It just sounded ridiculous. So I kept my mouth shut, hoping I could somehow make things right without blowing everything up. When I finally made it home, I breathed a sigh of relief to find my husband still at work. It might sound silly, but I was overwhelmed with shame and embarrassment. I couldn't shake the feeling that my guilt was written all over my face and in every movement of my body. I've always been one of those people who believes their secrets are written on their forehead in invisible ink, especially after doing something as stupid as cheating. Plus, my husband was pretty perceptive. Even if he didn't automatically jump to the conclusion that I had cheated, he definitely sensed that something was off. And knowing him, he wouldn't let it go until I spilled the beans. So I wasted no time in retreating to the hot tub and scrubbing myself raw in the shower. I scrubbed until my skin felt raw, as if trying to wash away the shame and regret that clung to me like a second skin. All I wanted was to forget about that sleazy boss of mine and move on from this nightmare. After my shower, I slumped in front of the TV, my mind buzzing with guilt and regret. The idea of quitting my job kept nagging at me. My boss had totally screwed me over and I felt like crap for falling for it. I tossed around the idea of becoming a stay-at-home mom or finding a new gig. The promotion didn't even matter to me anymore. All I wanted was to never have to deal with my boss again. But then, I couldn't shake the feeling that I'd gone through so much crap to get that promotion. It felt wrong to just walk away from it all. It was a tough call. I hated the thought of profiting from my mistake, but at the same time, I couldn't ignore the fact that I'd gone through hell to get where I was. So I made up my mind. I'd go all out making dinner that night, hoping it would make up for the mess I'd gotten myself into. I put my heart into making dinner, cooking up a storm in the kitchen. I made enough food to feed an army and set the table with care, even though I knew my husband had already tidied up the day before. But despite all my efforts, I couldn't shake this restless feeling. When my husband finally got home, his mood was like a storm cloud rolling in. It was written all over his face, like he had a permanent sad expression. I could feel the tension in the air, but I didn't know how to approach him. Even though he seemed distant, I couldn't help but feel this sense of familiarity. We've been through so much together, and I know him better than anyone else. So I gathered up my courage and asked him what was wrong, but he didn't even acknowledge me like he was deliberately shutting me out. I was at a loss for what to do. All I wanted was for my husband to come home, wrap me in his arms, and help me make sense of everything I'd been through. Instead, he was angry and distant, shutting me out when I tried to talk to him. Feeling defeated, I resigned myself to eating dinner alone. It wasn't until I sat down to eat that I realized something was off. I hadn't even thought about the kids since my husband had come home. Normally, he picks them up from school, but with his mood, I hadn't had a chance to ask about them. When I finally mustered the courage to ask, he finally acknowledged me. He told me the kids were at his parents' place, which caught me off guard. We don't usually send them there on school days, especially with classes the next morning. I tried to reason with him, but he brushed off my concerns, insisting he'd pick them up early enough for school. It left me wondering why the rush... We could have easily visited his parents on the weekend, but he refused to give me a straight answer, shutting me out once again. Feeling defeated and desperate to break the ice, I asked my husband to join me for dinner, hoping it might help us reconnect. That's when he finally spoke up, but his question hit me like a ton of bricks. Did I spend the night at my boss's place? I didn't have to say a word. The way I froze, the guilt written all over my face, said it all. It was like my body confessed before I could even open my mouth. My heart sank as I watched my husband's reaction. He looked like he was about to cry and his disappointment was written all over his face. I wanted to ask him how he found out, but he didn't say a word. It felt like the world was crashing down around me. I had hoped that what happened at my boss's place would just fade away, that my husband would never find out. But here I was, faced with his knowledge of what I did. In a daze, my husband got up and went into our room, locking the door behind him, leaving me standing there, feeling completely alone with my guilt. 
I barely slept in the guest room, my mind racing with worry all night. I knew my husband finding out could mean the end of our marriage, and that scared the hell out of me. If only I had come clean to him first, maybe things wouldn't be so messed up now. The next morning, I went through my usual routine, but every action felt heavy with anxiety. I didn't even bother calling into work. Fixing things with my husband was all I could think about. As I brushed my teeth, took a shower, and made breakfast, I couldn't shake the feeling of dread. When my husband finally got back home a couple of hours later, I knew it was time to face the music. He wasted no time and told me he wanted me out of the house. It felt like my whole world was crashing down and I had no idea what to do next. I wish I could tell you every detail of what happened next, but it all happened so fast, like someone hit fast forward. I was crying my eyes out, begging my husband not to end our family. I said sorry a million times, but he wouldn't budge. He told me he'd been thinking all night and if he could forgive me, he would have done it last night. But forgiveness wasn't happening. He said the whole thing cut too deep and he couldn't shake the image of me and my boss. Then he dropped a bomb. My best friend spilled everything. At first, I couldn't believe it. How could she do that to me? But my husband showed me the messages and a video. She claimed she forgot her bag at the party and came back for it. It sounded fishy. Who forgets their bag? She was clearly snooping, knowing our boss was into me. I should have seen through her facade. My husband revealed that my so-called bestie, or rather ex-bestie now, pulled a sneaky move. She claimed she forgot her bag and swung back to my boss's place to grab it, only to overhear some noises from the room. Somehow she managed to discreetly record a video without me or my boss noticing. Uh Honestly, I'm not shocked she slipped into the house unnoticed. The door wasn't exactly bolted shut. But what baffles me is how she pulled off filming without either of us catching on. Guess luck was on her side that day. So that backstabbing snake sent the video to my husband and spilled all the beans. She even made up lies saying my boss had been hitting on me for months, which was total BS. Sure, my boss flirted with me sometimes, but he never made any moves until his damn birthday party. As for my so-called friend, I should have seen it coming. She always had eyes for my husband. I remember at my bachelorette party, she drunkenly said she deserved a man like him, not me. But when I confronted her later, she just laughed it off as her being drunk. Stupidly, I believed her. Well, I had to pack up and leave. My husband was still in shock and I couldn't stay there any longer. I called for an Uber and headed straight to my parents' house. Luckily, they lived nearby, so I didn't have to go far. My husband promised he'd take care of the kids, but I could visit whenever. We agreed to keep each other updated, given the mess we were in. That's how the whole disaster played out. It was chaotic and overwhelming. Weeks passed, and sadly, my husband and kids started adjusting to life without me at home. I made sure to visit them whenever I could, but things were never the same. As soon as I had the chance, I quit my job. I couldn't stand the thought of seeing my sleazy ex-boss ever again. I cut off my so-called friend, too. She betrayed me in the worst possible way, and I wanted nothing to do with her anymore. Now, my husband is pushing for a divorce. He's already mentioned sending me the papers and is talking about filing for custody. I can't say I'm surprised. He earns way more than I do, and he has a stable home for the kids. Plus, they're more attached to him. It's a tough situation, and I'm not sure how it'll all turn out, but I am definitely losing out here. I've destroyed my marriage, never got the promotion, and even quit. Broke as hell as my husband was my main source of income, and won't even get custody of my kids. Honestly, I just felt like sharing my story on Reddit because maybe someone out there can learn from my mistakes. Cheating is never worth it, and I've learned that the hard way. And if my sleazy ex-boss ever comes across this, well, I have one message for him. Screw you, ex-boss. Picture a young girl with short hair and an average face growing up in an average family. My family wasn't rich, but they did their best to take care of me. I was bullied as a kid, so I was more of a loner than others. I didn't have many friends, not until my brother came along. His name is John. He was my best friend, and he still is. I was five years old when I held his small body in my hand. He practically followed me around everywhere. When I got into college, he didn't want me to go, and he cried. I shouldn't have gone, but I can't change anything that has happened, and I know that. Along the line, I started becoming an extrovert, and I was able to talk more with others. A lot of things have happened since then. I was also able to stand up for myself. I'm married now, and my life was going great. 
not until Alex, my ex-boyfriend, entered the picture. John didn't like Alex much, but I think it was a guy thing. You're probably wondering why I'm telling you all this, and you don't understand. So I'll start from the beginning. My name is Emily, and I want to tell you a story. I'm not a writer, so pardon me if there's any mistakes, but I'll make sure you'll understand what I'm telling you. This is my story, and I need everyone's help because I don't know what to do. I'll start from the beginning of my married life. I met Stan when I was 21 years old. We were both done with university, and since then, we hit it off. I gave him the cold shoulder at first. He never gave up on me, but the way he acted was different from Alex, not like I'm comparing. He's a really sweet and caring guy. We dated for a year plus, and he introduced me to his family. I loved his family, and they also loved me. It was great. Stan proposed to me, and I said yes. The marriage went smoothly. It was a very small wedding at a small church, and we invited just a few friends and family members. I didn't want something large because I hated being around crowds, and he respected that. I remember telling him the words, I do. To be honest, I was scared of getting married because I didn't want it to hold me down, but eventually I had the courage. We've been married for a year now, and some problem came up. The first one is that I couldn't get pregnant, and I don't know why. Okay, maybe I know why, but we're trying to work on it. The doctor said I don't have enough eggs to fertilize, and I don't even know what that means. It's really upsetting because his family and also mine kept bothering me when we were going to get a baby. I don't know how to tell them that we're trying, but I know it's anytime soon. If nothing works, we have no choice but to say something. I would list the other issues as I keep writing. My husband, Stan, and I live in this three-bedroom apartment which he bought, and I'm really proud of him. He also has this job that he's doing. I can't say where, but all I can say is that he's a lawyer. From someone who came from a very average home, I would say this is a huge job and I can't stop bragging about it to my friends. I also have a teaching job. I teach kids in kindergarten, and I have to say that it's a really fun thing to do. I really want kids of my own and we're still trying to figure something out. Now, picture a Wednesday evening where the sun rays are shining since it was summer. My friends came over that evening for our little book club that we do. I love reading books, and I also met others who do. There are three of them. There's Sarah, she's the nerdest in the group, and she's fun to be around. There's also Tracy, who is the hottest in the group, or at least the other friends say that. And the last one is Anna. She's the clown of the group because she makes everyone laugh. You can say that I'm kind of in between everything, and I love myself for that. It was my day off from work then because I was a bit of a part-time teacher. I only go to work on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays, so Wednesday and Thursdays were my day off during the weekdays. Stan was at work that day and I was having fun with my friends. We discussed a lot of things. It was already late, so they told me bye and I escorted them out. I heard my phone vibrate and I thought, who would be calling me right now? I didn't hear it vibrate anymore, so I figured out it was a text. I don't receive texts except for my mail concerning a work-related thing, so this was surprising. When I checked it, it was from an unknown number. I was very curious now. I opened the message and I was shocked. The message was from Alex, my ex, who I hadn't heard from in more than a year. He didn't even come to my wedding, not like I was expecting him to. I knew this was him because the text he sent was, Hey M, it's Alex. I don't know if you still remember me, but hit me up if you do. You might be thinking, I know many Alex. Or maybe you're not, but the point is that he's the only one that calls me M. I was wondering how he got my number, considering I didn't think he'd have it with him. And before I could even think of texting him then, my phone crashed. There's another story for that. I met Alex when I was in college. I was a freshman and he was a sophomore. He was this proud person who I didn't like at first. He assumed everyone was in love with him because he was this handsome guy and I didn't like it because he was right. And most of my friends had a crush on him and pushed themselves on him. I tried my best to ignore him every time, but for unknown reasons, he kept trying to come closer to me. I noticed this at first, but I tried to ignore it. Perhaps I was just overthinking it. I figured it out when he came to me in person trying to start a conversation with me, but I only walked away. I didn't want attention to myself and I intended to be very low key, but he was trying to make things worse for me. He came again to me and I spoke my mind to him. I asked him why he was trying to talk to him when clearly there were other girls that wanted him and he only scoffed. 
He talked about how he didn't care about others and he's been watching me from afar. I laughed because that was creepy, but I still didn't believe him. He tried getting closer to me every time, by talking to me, walking with me, and even telling everyone that I was his very good friend. Each day, it looked like the girls around hated me while my friends showed that they were jealous. A month had passed and Alex asked me out. I turned him down at first and he never gave up. He told me he liked me and wanted to date me. I didn't believe him because boys weren't trustworthy, especially not in college. Yet Alex didn't give up and he kept trying to go out with me, but I said no. There was a day where I finally said yes and agreed to go out with me. He looked so excited about it and that made me smile too. I asked him where we would be going and he said he was going to come pick me up at home. He knew where I lived since he walked home with me sometimes. I told my mom and dad about the date and they smiled. I was 18 then, so they said they would let me go on the date with him. I did everything to look extra pretty for him. I didn't completely like him, but maybe I did feel something for him. He came over and he was amazed when he saw my short hair let down even when I usually packed it up in school. His eyes also scanned my blue dress that I wore. I hoped it wasn't too much. I scanned him too and thought he looked really good with the black suit he wore. At first I hoped my dressing wasn't too much, now I was thinking I didn't dress well. He greeted my parents and they investigated him before they let us go. We laughed at that because his voice was shaky throughout. I apologized to him for the pressure they were putting on him. John was also around, but he just glared at him, and it was funny because it made Alex uncomfortable. We went to his car, and he opened the door for me, just like a gentleman. I was honestly delighted by that. He also complimented me, which took me aback. He had given me compliments, but not as sincere as this. Alex took me to a fancy restaurant, which was my first time there coming from an average family. I thought dates were burgers or pizza places. That night, Alex and I discussed a lot of things. I found out things about him. He told me he was an artist and I was amazed. No one knew about that except one close friend that he trusted them not to tell anyone. The fact that Alex had a hobby like that was what surprised me more. We ordered some food and even the food was fancy and tasted good. I asked Alex to show me his art and he brought out his phone and showed me some that he snapped. I remember one which was a little girl holding a flower and it was something I'd never seen before. It was a unique drawing and he had talent. I also told him things about me, about my family and where I come from. I asked him when he started liking me and he said, it just happened. My first kiss was with him and it was a blissful memory. The night was over before we knew it. I hated how the night ended so quickly because I wanted to spend more time with him. He took me home and I told him bye. The next day was almost the same as every day, except this time I accepted Alex and everyone knew we were dating. This went on for almost a year before things changed. He told me he wanted to talk to me. I was scared because of the tone with which he said. I was thinking if he was fed up with me and wanted to break up, I wouldn't be surprised if it was that. But what he told me was different. He said he was going to travel out of the country to pursue his studies in art. That was a great thing to me because I remember asking him if he had any plans since he was great at it. I knew there was something more with the way he looked at me and I feared that I knew what it was. He told me he had to break up because he couldn't have a long distance relationship. I remember begging him not to, that we could work on it. I also remember telling him that I liked him so much and I wanted to have something with him but he kept turning me down and said he couldn't work out. We maintained distance then, and I was pissed. I was angry at him, but more at myself because I wanted someone and the person didn't. He tried talking to me sometimes, but I didn't want to hear anything from him. He left the country some days after and he didn't even say goodbye. I was pissed because he had my number and he couldn't call. I also had his number, but I couldn't give up my pride to text or call first. Around that time, my phone got damaged and I lost all the contacts. I didn't think I'd be hearing from Alex. Well, at least, not until now. I was still looking at the message and contemplating whether I should reply back or not. I did what my instincts said, and I replied to him. I was hesitant and walked around wondering if he would text back. I was thinking maybe he texted me by mistake, and my silly mind replied to him, and it was probably a joke. My phone vibrated after a few minutes and I immediately checked it. His message read, hey, it's been long. I know it's weird that I was expecting his text, but it didn't mean anything. 
I just felt glad that I meant something to him and he still remembered me. I should have stopped texting him then, but a part of me wanted to talk to him, so that's how it started. We kept texting back and forth each day. Alex informed me about lots of things. It was all through texts, but I know we shared a lot of feelings too. He informed me about how his study in arts went well. He asked me things about what I was doing and about my career. I thought about whether I should lie at first, but I couldn't because I love my husband. I told Alex that I was married and he didn't reply. I was thinking maybe it was a bad idea, but my mind changed when he texted me back. He told me it was great that I was married and he hoped I was happy. It didn't sound sincere to me when I read it, but I left it at that. It's been a week since we were chatting and everything was going great. He asked me where I was staying now because he wanted to come visit. I was against it, but it didn't seem bad since it was just an old friend who's also an ex. There was just one problem and it was that Stan didn't know. I didn't know if I should tell him because it was concerning my ex and he knew all about our past. I was looking for something to justify what I was doing. I tried telling myself that there's nothing wrong in texting an ex. Alex and I kept texting, talking about life and sharing more things. I made a mistake one day. I still didn't see the use of telling my husband about him since it was just Alex and I. I was chatting with Alex one day and Stan asked me why I was always on the phone. He knew I didn't text much, so it looked weird to him. I don't know why I lied and told him it was nobody. I left my phone for a second to go to take out the trash, and when I came back, I saw my phone in his hand. I became angry, and I don't know why. I think one of the reasons is because I was wondering why my phone was in his hand. It meant he didn't trust me. I was also angry at myself because I knew I would have to tell him the truth. He looked at me and I asked him what he was doing with my phone. He said a call came in, but he had a question for me. Who was Alex? He knew about my ex, Alex, but he wanted to confirm it was him. I asked him why he was looking at my texts, but he didn't answer me. Can you believe that? He went on with the questions and I told him the truth about how it was my ex. He frowned and shouted, asking about why I would be texting my ex. I told him it was no big deal and he should stop making it sound huge. He was exaggerating. I mean, it's normal to text your ex, right? I also argued with him that it wasn't me that texted him first and he was the one. It's just a longtime friend of the past. Yet Stan kept overreacting, saying he texted for a purpose, but I don't believe that. He told me to stop texting Alex, but I don't want to. Is that bad? Imagine how much he would react if I said he wanted to visit, though I don't want Alex coming between Stan and I. I collected my phone from him and went out for a walk. Stan kept telling me to come back because we were still talking, but I didn't want this conversation to keep going. I needed to clear my head. I don't know what to do right now because I'm stuck. Should I keep texting with Alex? It's not like he said he wanted to go out with me or anything. Even if he says that one day, it wouldn't bring any harm because we were friends. Or should I not text him anymore and listen to my husband? What if he truly has a purpose like he said? My mind is all jumbled up right now, so I need advice on what to do. Please help. Comments. One. You, Reddit user one. What's wrong with you? I mean that in the most absurd way, because why would you want to choose an ex over your own husband? You do love him, yes? Something tells me that you don't. It's best if you think well on it because he probably deserves someone better than you. Why did you keep it secret from him in the first page? if you had nothing to hide. Two, you Reddit user two. You Reddit user one. This is a tough situation, so don't be too hard on her. She came here because she wanted advice, so stop judging her. Emily, I believe you should take time to calm down and think well about this. Your husband may be right, it's not a normal thing for an ex to text you just to greet you. He also says he wants to visit. What normal person would want to visit their married ex? You should have a deep talk with Stan and tell him all about these, especially your feelings. You two sound like you have a great and special marriage. It shouldn't ruin so easily. Three, you Reddit user three. Why is no one talking about Alex? I'm only seeing talks about Emily and her husband. Hello, there's literally an ex here. Who's the problem? I believe Emily should contact Alex. You two have only been talking through texts and you also don't know much about him. 
All you know is that he's in the city and he wants to meet you. So don't do silly things like keeping things from your husband and talk to him about it. So you two will be able to solve this issue. Talk to Alex. Four. You Reddit user four. Something tells me that you're the problem. Women never appreciate something good in front of them. Instead, they want the good thing they had in the past. You should fix this and don't let your marriage get destroyed. Update. It's been days since I had an argument with my husband. I tried talking to him, but he said he didn't want to talk to me till I did something about Alex. I also read the comments. Wow, there were some really mean ones, but I realized you guys were right. I was the problem right now. I love Stan, and even though Alex was a past thing, I still had a little bit of feelings for him. But this was only because he suddenly wanted to come back into my life. I talked to John, my brother I talked about in the beginning, and I told him that Alex was back. He sounded furious over the phone, and I told him the things that had happened. He said Alex couldn't come back and try to pry into my life when I'm finally happy. I talked to my close friends, if you still remember them, the ones from the book club. They also gave me some good advice like you all did, and it was to communicate with my husband. I begged him to talk to me. He finally agreed and he asked me who I made up my mind on. Was it him or Alex? I shook my head and held his hands because that was an absurd question now that I heard it. I can't believe I wanted to destroy my marriage because of someone I felt something for before. I apologized and Lee told Stan I chose him over and over again and everything's normal now. The only problem remaining was Alex. He kept texting me and asking when we were gonna meet, but I tried my best to ignore him. You're thinking why I didn't block him, but I didn't want to come off too strong, although that probably sounds like an excuse. Alex began calling me because he noticed, but I didn't answer. The phone calls became more too. Stan went to work one day and it was on one of my days off when Alex called in. I answered it after staring at it for a few seconds and I heard his voice. It had been so long since I heard his voice. It sounded deeper and different than the one I'd heard. It's been three weeks since he texted me and I was just hearing his voice. But this time, I didn't feel the emotion anymore. I'm happy about that because I wasn't so sure. I didn't want to be attached to my ex while being with my husband. Alex said hi over the phone and I answered him. He said my voice has changed and I said the same. He asked me why I didn't text him anymore and why I was ignoring his calls, so I told him the truth. I told him Stan and I were not comfortable with it. I didn't bother going into any further details because it was none of his business. I told him not to bother calling me anymore. He protested at first, saying he didn't see anything wrong in a friend calling a friend. I told him he didn't need to see that, but he just needed to know. I did ask why he suddenly texted me one day, and he told me the truth. He said because he missed me and missed what he had. He told me he felt disappointed when I said I was married. That made me cringe in a way, because was he expecting me to wait for him and accept him once he was back? It's been three years since I met Stan, and meeting him changed my whole life. I feel happier with him. <laughs> Anyways, like I said, I told him it didn't matter and he should stop trying. He apologized to me and the call ended. Once Stan came back, I told him everything that we discussed and what had happened. I promised him I won't ever let anything come between me and him because I love him. I'm happy I got married. We also discussed more things about us going to the doctor concerning the pregnancy, or we might just adopt if nothing works. Thanks to everyone here that gave me all of this advice and helped me save my marriage.